Hi everyone and welcome back to part four of our Tinkerbell colour along and we are doing this from the fairy tale special by the amazing Colouring Heaven magazine and we are going to wrap this up as you know the designs are by Hannah Lynn and this is our lovely Tinkerbell which we have been colouring on the channel we're going to finish this up we are going to do the thimble the background and the sparkles so I'm going to zoom in and we're going to continue with the thimble. So we left off where we had started with the colours silver in PC949. We were using 70% warm grey in PC1056. We were using 70% cool grey in PC1065. We had the colour white in PC938 and we also <clears throat> have the colour black in PC935. These are all Prisma colours as Prisma colours seem to be an all rounder that most colourists have now. So we've gone with that. I have done marker bases as you've been following me on some parts but not all. So without further ado I'm going to jump back into this and I'm going to put my lay down of silver in 949. I'm going to leave this section for a moment and I'm going to come down to the thimble, the main part of the thimble and we're going to put down the silver to start with. And we're going to go over the entire area with the silver. I'm going with a medium pressure. Not heavy, not light, just kind of medium. Just enough to lay the colour down, but not enough to press too hard. Okay. Now this part has got her leg, which might shadow, and under here, which might shadow as well, because her petticoat. So I'm going to get my 70% warm grey, and I'm just going to shadow this a little bit, because it is leaning onto the thimble, and it would shadow naturally, because something's there. So I'm just picking it out, I'm just lightly pressing this, I'm just picking out where I would like. Same with this part because I just know where I'm going with it then, okay? So just onto this section here. Okay, now I think based on the fact that I have done the bottom area from dark to light, I'm going to continue that pattern and I am going to sort of darken those with black so that it's more of a shadow underneath. It's just kind of know where I'm going with it then. And I'm going to bring that shading from the corner inwards. Then I'm going to get back my 70% cool grey in PC1065 and quite a heavy pressure on my lay down. Don't you worry too much, I'll erase that. I'm just sort of laying down where I would want the darkest colour to go into my lightest shade. It's sort of light and dark and judging how you would like it. You know, you don't have to do it exactly how I do it. I'm just giving you how I would sort of, how I am doing it. <laughs> okay. I just need... There we go, just need an eraser pen. Okay. Now I'm going to get back my 70% warm grey. So I'm just going to pick all that out now. And then my silver in PC949. <clears throat> so I'm going to go over all of that. You might lose some of the lines that you've put there, but I can kind of see still, so you're going to use the black for that. And I'm just going over the entire area. And the same here. And with the black, I'm just going to it in the line and again now I can put where I would like my shadows to go because it's 
still there, it's still in sight and I can now put it down properly. Okay, and the same into this corner. And just fade that out. You're not going with a heavy lay down on your black because it can oversaturate it. So you're just kind of picking out where you would like it. I'm just going to grab back my cool grey, which is in the 70% in PC1065. I'm just going to go over that a little bit because I'm not entirely happy with it and that's just me. And then I'm going to grab my white in PC938 and just here, not into the shadowed area, I just beyond that. I just want to blend that all together a little bit. Okay, so if I zoom you out, you can kind of see it's coming together now. With my white Posca, I just want to go down the side really, and just slightly along here. <clears throat> and then I think within the middle, I'm going to choose like a, like a copper colour. So I'm going to zoom you in. I'm going to pick out the colours... Bear with me. I'm going to go for the colour bronze in PC1028 and this will be my base. I'm going to bring that along guys. I'm going to get the colour pumpkin orange and goldenrod. So goldenrod first, which is PC1034. And I'm just going to lay that down first going over all the bronze area again to about there and then I'm going to grab the pumpkin orange in PC1032 and I'm going to redden that up a little bit like a sort of it's like an orangey bronze you're going to come back to that you now need chocolate in PC1082. This is where you're going to make it like a dark copper. So you're going quite heavy with that into the corner. You will have a little bit of a wax bloom, but you can wipe that away, that's fine. And then I'm going to come back to my golden rod and meet that here. And then I'm going to grab my black in PC935. And again, not a heavy lay down of this, just enough to make it look like it's got just a little bit of shade in. And then I'm going to come back in with my pumpkin orange in PC1032 and I'm just going to make that a bit more red, just down at the bottom. So, just following that round. And then I'm going to grab the white in PC938 and I'm just going to blend 
that edge a little but just be mindful of that shadow because you can smudge that so just go around it and be mindful of it okay so if I zoom you out she's got a silver thimble but she's got like a copper strip now I'm just gonna put in some but overall it's just like a just like a little shine okay now we're gonna go on to our sparkle I quite like the idea of having a yellow of some kind so I'm gonna grab the colour Deco Yellow and Deco Yellow is in PC 1011 and I'm going to bring you up and zoom you in to show you what I'm kind of doing with the sparkles so it's just these larger ones so I'm going to go over the entire areas with the Deco Yellow I'll keep you in frame at the top before I move down so you're just covering all these and the circles so press firmly with this colour don't be scared to right and then before I do the rest to show you where I'm kind of going to go with these, I'm going to grab the golden rod in PC1034 and I'm just going to shade slightly into them but not a huge amount. So just give them like an orangey tinge. So you could do some of them in orange, some of the circles in orange. And again, I'm going to go into these just half of the diamond shapes okay so if you continue that I'm going to zoom out because otherwise I won't get all the sparkles in so again over the entire area with the deco yellow so all of the diamonds and some of your circles. Down into these. And again, grabbing your golden rod and just going into some. sort of halfway down. I don't worry too much about these because they will stand out against your background that you're going to apply. And some of these circles you can leave blank because we're going to fill them in with Posca against the pastel background. So don't be too fussed about some of them. We can fill some in and leave some blank because you will see. Okay, so the majority of your stuff is done now and we're going to do the background and add all the finishing touches okay so now i have just grabbed for me i have this set it's the faber castell 72 soft pastel so they're chalky and how i'm going to approach this is i'm going to do a couple of greens over her background and we're going to make those sparkles glittery and outline them and we're going to go with that how I always say approach stuff with pastels, I generally have no applicators. I use good old cotton pads and cotton buds, like Q-tips, and they work perfectly well for me. How I'll approach this is I'm going to pick out some greens. So I will do this with you, and I'll test them out here. So I want a light green, so you can any pastel set you have, you can do this. And I do a tester on a bit of paper to start with. So I'm thinking along that. 
Then I will pick out a sort of mid to medium green. And again, before you put it onto your paper, I strongly suggest that you try it out beforehand. So that's another green that we can include. And then we can go for just a slightly darker green. So I'm thinking maybe this one. So you just rub it against and you'll get an idea before you put it down. That might be too dark, so I'm not going to go for that. This is a good way to test them beforehand. But maybe this one will be good. So we can always test it first. So we're predominantly going to go with these two and we're going to add some of this one in after. So have a play around on a test bit of paper first before you put it onto your page. Now for bigger areas, I'm going to grab a cotton bud, a cotton pad, and I just fold it up and have like a pointed triangled edge. And I'm going to grab the shade that I want the most of to start with. So it's quite a you know good amount, generous amount on there. And I'm just going to work it into the page. So there's no method to this. You can do it as and how you would like it. And I'm just having to zoom you out so that you can see. So I'm just going over with my lightest shade first. I'm picking out where I'd like it to go to initially start with. Just be mindful that you have coloured stuff in. So, you know, try not to go into your pe pencil work. But also, it won't make a huge difference if you can just rub. So just be mindful of where you've put the pencil lay down. So I'm just picking out where I would want the lightest shade to go to start with. Okay. Now I'm going to get another clean pad. Again, same method. And I'm going to get that sort of moss green colour that I've got. It's like a moss green, olive green. And I'm going to put a generous amount on the onto the pad. Get my words out in a minute. So a good amount, sort of like that. And again, I'm going to pick that out. So this is a lot darker. So just be a bit careful with this one. And you can fade it out with the clean edge. Again, I'm going to pick this out where I want it. And I think we're going to go for down in this section and then a bit here so I mean where your wings will stand out more when this is down and then I think I'm going to go for the darkest shade of what I have chosen And this, as you see, is a completely different green, so I'm not going to be too heavy-handed. I'm going to lightly apply this, because this is just going to be in sections. Just enough to kind of make a contrast of different greens, but not to oversaturate it. So, she's coming like together how I personally want her. Now if you've got an eraser, you could do it with an electric one, but I personally use something called a Faber-Castell Perfection, and I'm gonna zoom you in. So into these sections, I'm just gonna erase circles. You can freehand these any how you want. So just like that. Just little tiny circles. I'm going to bring some in here. Just erase circles as and where you want them. I'm going to bring you up. So just like a few, just here and there as you want them. I 
I personally don't use any fixatives or anything because there's nothing on the other side so it's not going to smudge. So again this is totally optional but if you want to then just erase not too many just seldom space them out and I'm going to do a large one there okay so as you can see she has these circles like a bokka type background but it's not and now but alternating between my white Posca so I'm just going to go over some of these And we're going to add some stickles and if you haven't got stickles again you can leave that part because the rest of it is just as effective without not all of them just want some of them high highlighted you can do all you're just playing around with what you would like preference you can do some of these in white it's totally optional it's your coloring book and how you would like your finished product to look so please do this however you really would like it and then and then I'm going to grab my and then I'm going to grab my green Posca and again some of these circles ones that I didn't color in I'm just going to add the green Posca, it takes the black line out but it gives her some green little dots around. You can add one of those in green. I think I'm going to do that one even though I've coloured it in green. And then I'm going to come over to this side and then we're going to do some of these. optional again guys but if you have something called stickles which is a glitter glue I've got one in crystal and just over these little small ones I'm just going to put just some sparkles so that they glitter and glisten which is really nice um, you don't need to do thick because they're quite thick these glitter glues but they are so effective and they make everything so glistening and glittery and just perfect for fairy dust and sparkles, you know. So you just go over all of those. And I think I'm going to do over her bottle as well. Just as a finishing touch. Okay, and that is our final part of Tinkerbell. She has been a lot of fun to do. She is now finished. She's got everything done on her. And I hope you enjoyed that. Please share with me your results over on my Facebook page, which is Colour and Chat with Sammy Adult Colouring. I thank you so much for joining me on this Tinkerbell Colour Along. I look forward to everyone's final product and creative, gorgeous pictures that they have created on a page with me. Thank you for joining me until the next colour along, until the next video. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.